I've grown up with a garden my whole life. My brother and I were fed almost entirely from mum's garden growing up. And that's such a great thing because we didn't have much money, but money couldn't buy better fruits and vegetables than the ones we were being brought up with. My mum is a particularly passionate gardener, so I thought I would share her story, her garden, some of her great insights, and why it's a wonderful thing to start a garden. I think when I was a teenager, I grew my first tomato plant. Uh, when I finally decided that I liked the jolly things and it was so easy to grow and it produced so much that I got quite excited by it and uh, it, all <laughs> it all spread from there really uh, and then I also became aware of the increasing amount of chemicals that were being used on our foods and I thought well is this really necessary and I decided it wasn't uh, so that just inspired me to get on and grow my own stuff. So I knew exactly what was on it, what was in it, um, how far it had travelled, how fresh it was. And it was even more important once I had my own children to be able to produce good food on a really tight budget and know that whatever they were getting was the absolute best that I could give them. This is the beginning of autumn now and some of the things I have in my garden is I have about 30 tomato plants. I have a lot of sweet corn, uh, which is due for picking, and I will freeze a lot of that. I've got sunflower plants that I grow. I keep the seeds for my chickens. I've got cabbages, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflowers. I've got capsicums, chilies, lots of beans. Onions have already been harvested. I grew red onions and long keeping onions and garlic, lots of garlic, about 200 plants of garlic. I've got spring onions, lettuces, eggplants, oh, carrots of course, parsnips, beetroot, tomatillos and quinoa and also I have lots of fruit trees which most of them are finished now fortunately because it gets to be a big job. I've had cherries, um, peaches, nectarines, two different, three different kinds of plums, figs, I still get another crop of figs coming yet. I have about seven varieties of apples now, uh, but not seven trees because some of the trees have more than one variety on them. I have uh, golden queen peaches, which are just ripening now. And I have nut trees. I've got hazelnuts and almonds. And I also grow berries. I have um, several black currant bushes. I have a big raspberry patch, which did really well this year. I've got blueberry bushes, they're still young and small, so I'm not getting a lot off them yet. I grow gooseberries, uh, cape gooseberries, um, did I say strawberries? I have a huge thornless blackberry bush which is loaded and I'm just starting to pick them now. Oh, I've got red currants and white currants as well. And you know, the more I think of it, the more things I remember. There's just so much tucked away around here, it gets easy to forget. Not everyone needs a garden like this to get all the benefits of gardening. There are so many wonderful benefits to starting a garden. You get outside in the fresh air and the sunshine and the birds are tweeting and your pets come out and keep you company and chase little insects around and it's just so jolly and good fun. And as an added bonus you get all this lovely food, you know, for next to nothing and it tastes so good because it's fresh, it's got no chemicals on it if you don't want to use chemicals. It's beneficial in every possible way you could think of it, and it saves you lots of money. Um, but the thing about saving you money is that you do need to start them off from seed yourself, because if you start off buying seedlings and you've got no experience in gardening, you will have failures. Things will die, and that will cost you money. So the best way to start gardening, in my opinion, is to start with a few packets of seed. It doesn't cost you very much per seed, so if you have failures, it's not a problem, you can start again. Best way to start your seeds, except for root crops, so it's probably best to start with things like maybe lettuces, cabbages, corn, tomatoes, easy things like that, is to start them in punnets, and I buy fairly cheap potting mix, and I three quarters fill my punnets with that and put a bit of seed raising mix just on the top, where the seeds are going to be. The soil in the punnets should be just damp to begin with and then when you've sprinkled your seeds very thinly, you don't need to put too many in, over the top, water them in very gently with a small jug or something like that 
and wait till there's no water running out the bottom. Then I put them in a plastic bag and put them in a warm place until the seeds start sprouting. And that can be a dark place, but once the seeds have started to sprout, when you see the little shoots coming out, you can take them out of that plastic bag and out of the dark, if they are in a dark place, and put them somewhere where they're going to get a bit of light. You don't want strong sunlight on tender new seedlings because it will kill them, it's too strong for them. But brightish indirect light is good. And then I can move them to wherever I want them in the garden. For people that don't have much room to grow things, uh, it's probably better to buy whatever seedlings you want in a punnet because then you're not going to get too many. If you sow seeds you will end up with a lot of plants generally, so that's a bit pointless if you don't have much room. So buy a punnet of seedlings. Um, you can buy mixed packs of brassicas that contain broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower um, and things like that so you get a mixture. They, I think they're good plants to start with. They're pretty easy to grow, they're not fussy about the climate and you get quite a large plant when it's mature. So other things to consider if you don't have a lot of room. If you want to grow berry bushes, something like black currants are the ideal thing I think. They grow upwards, they do grow outwards a bit as well, but they produce an awful lot and black currants are so good for you. They're so tasty and they're really full of vitamin C and all kinds of good phytochemicals. So they're a good one to consider. Um, you could, if necessary, even grow them in a very large pot. Um, the best plants for areas where there's not a lot of room are plants that are growing upwards for example like the beans behind me I really recommend climbing beans if you like beans for something really productive and easy climbing beans are brilliant though you need a really sturdy frame to climb them up um, I made a wooden teepee for my beans behind me but we had really strong winds yesterday which almost blew it over so a quite strong frame for climbing beans is advisable, but you get huge crops so easily. They're really wonderful. One of my favorite plants to grow is tomatoes, and I grow a lot of them because I eat them in just about everything and all year round. I grow all the tomatoes that I eat, and I make sauce and relish. I freeze lots and lots of them. I bottle them in their own juice and I grow all different heritage varieties, there's all different shapes and colours and sizes and they're so tasty and all the different ones taste slightly different too which makes it fun and interesting. Looking at what you can get the maximum production from off one plant or a couple of plants, zucchinis are really good, they're very productive. I get so many zucchinis I end up chopping them up and feeding them to the chickens. Pumpkins are a lot of fun and you can get lots and lots of pumpkins from one plant, one well-grown plant. Pumpkins keep well provided you harvest them when they're fully mature. Potatoes are really easy to keep. When they're mature you dig up the plants and you just you dry off your potatoes slightly if they're at all damp. If the soil's damp when you dig them up you dry them off. That You can lay them out on the ground in a in a warm sort of shaded place you don't want sun on them just till they're dry and then store them in sacks or bags they have to be kept dark that's the most important thing with potatoes and in a coolish place like a, a basement is really good a cool dark basement ideal onions um, you harvest them when they've browned off and the skins are dry and then you can just hang them up in netting bags or tie them up in strings and again, keep them in a coolish place, a dry place, but with a bit of fresh air is handy. And the same thing's done with garlic. Freezing is best for things like beans and um, your broccoli and cauliflower. You can chop them up into smaller bits and freeze them. I keep the carrots in the ground um, for the winter. You can just get part bales of straw and spread them fairly thick on top of the carrots in the ground so the ground won't freeze then you just lift your bale of straw off and dig out the carrots as you want them. You can do the same for parsnips and beetroot. You can keep them in the ground provided you prevent them from freezing. 
having so many fruit trees you get a whole fruit tree full of fruit ready all at once you can't say to it just slow down and do half a dozen at a time please it doesn't work like that you get the whole lot all at once and you have to deal with it so I bottle some of them which means preserving them in jars I dry some of them in, in the Sun I have a little frame that I made with a mesh over it and it has an old window that fits over the top and I just cut the fruit in half and lay it out on the mesh in the Sun and it dries out in the Sun um, you can also freeze fruit and I've also made fruit leather which is pulped fruit which is then dried into a kind of a leathery thing which is really yummy to eat those are various ways of dealing with fruit of course then you can make jams and pickles and chutneys and I do all that too which is a lot of fun and you get so many different tasty things which are great to eat for yourself but to give away as gifts to other people and that's um, an underestimated aspect of gardening is that you have so much lovely stuff that you can give to people as gifts and thank yous for things that other people have done for you it's so beneficial in so many ways if you have any questions for mum, just write them below and I can relay them to her. And I hope this has planted a seed of thought so that you can plant a real seed and go grow yourself some food. <laughs>